Hello and welcome back to Celebrity Big Brother Breakdown on a very special day. Actually, it's the day before, but I'm not in tomorrow because I'm off on a secret mission. So tomorrow is actually your birthday. It is my birthday. It's my 39th birthday. You don't need to tell anyone No, that. but I tell you this because a breakdown is imminent. Oh, man. I've got you a little <laughs> something just to mark the occasion. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Do you know what I feel a bit like? This is really sweet. Thank you. Um, I feel a bit like, you know on um, reality TV shows, when it is someone's birthday is during the filming, and um, they all have to do a sort of white party or something to yes. celebrate. So what will we do today to celebrate my almost birthday? Um, shall we just overanalyze some housemates? I feel like I should, have my, I should have brought my leopard print. <laughs> oh, this is very sweet. I feel like Thank we... <laughs> you. Another year older, I say we just gin and bear it. I think that that looks like us. Oh, it does of. a bit. <laughs> we will get on to Big Brother chat shortly, I promise. Um, yeah, but first things first. What's more this? You are my sunshine. Sunshine, get it? Sun. See, we're all about the puns here, aren't we? Puns in the sun. Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you so much. And actually, getting older is kind of a theme that was in last night's episode, I yes. felt like. Yes. Oh, excellent segue. Right. Do you want to get this out of the way? Just well, so I'm it's just, not like bobbing I just don't want this to be all about me. It's embarrassing. Since when? <laughs> <laughs> right, hang on. Like, come on. Okay, we're out of the way, we're out of the way. Getting older. Well, let me just tell you. Um, I feel a, I, I, I get where ferns coming from here. <laughs> yeah. Um, because as like an older lady who has a Peter Pan life of living in London, we talk about this quite often. Um, the fact I'm nearly forty just feel like oh, I'm now. That's like a proper lady. You're an adult. Yeah. So Finally if I was in up. the celebrity with the house, do you think that Sharon would have been like, you're older, so you're not you're not involved with the young people now? I don't know. I think it's about how you act because Ek and Sue is in the older group and she's only 29. Yeah. And I think that's what I was looking <laughs> at last night in the last couple of episodes, actually, is seeing Fern really struggle mm. with being class as the older person and but she's actually in the younger person's group yeah so she's not naturally gelled with louis sharon ekin um there's been a real divide there um i don't know whether it's something about her not wanting to be older she seems to be having a bit of a crisis yeah she's crying at every moment and then Sharon gave this incredible insight last night saying how hurt Fern has been, how much she's carrying around with that. I thought that was so interesting. Yeah. Um, how many times can Fern cry? I mean, if that was on a bingo card, you would be really drunk. She is really struggling, isn't she? Um, I completely I, I completely understand why Sharon... So this was basically in Sharon's sort of killer nomination situation mm -hmm. that we talked about yesterday. She was given the power to save one housemate who had been nominated. She chose ZZ. Um, and then she instead put up Fern, didn't she? Yeah. Um, and she said as part of that that she she felt like Fern was struggling to fit in, essentially. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm not ageist, but I think it is kind of because of her age, mm. um, which is fair to say, probably quite hard for Fern to hear. But I, I agree. I, don't think, I think it came across wrongly in the way that Sharon, obviously Sharon's older, Louis's older, but they, I, I, I think it was more what, what Sharon was trying to say, and there's no easy way to say it, I think she was saying that Sharon and Louis accept their age and Fern does not. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's fair to say? Yeah, I do. And it's as if Sharon's seen that. And Sharon can see through everyone, can't she? She's yeah. brilliant at that. She's very astute. Very much um, so. But I agree that Fern, I thought would be coming into this, you know, very sorted. It's been a while since she did have her breakup, but it's been a while. Um, and Four years, I yeah. think it's been about four years. But she doesn't, so I think she's dealt with it. There's something that is on her mind all the time, especially dropping that whole, thank God I'm not someone's wife. Yeah. During that, really quite bizarre, I would call that a breakdown. <laughs> During that, that sing song. Yeah, yes. That was 
really bizarre. Yeah. That to me is verging towards George Galloway as a cat sort of sc- oh. scenario where you just think, have you lost the plot? What's happened? I, the, the whole, um, I'm going to open act two of the musical situation, it felt like she thought, oh no, I feel like I'm being invisible. I'm not doing enough. I need to do something. Mm. But then, like you say, it it all just felt quite uncomfortable, didn't it? Came oh. across very desperate. And, I hope she's okay. You know, she's, I do really hope she's okay because she does seem nice. But there is, I don't know, there's something really odd about her and Ekin. Whether that's a jealousy thing or I don't know, it's really bizarre. Yeah. That's been a, one of the most interesting points of, of the show so far for me. Um, and I think that if Fern stays, which I probably think she will, um, I think that that will open up a little bit more and we'll see sort of what the actual issue is there. You feel like almost Ekin, just sort of through being there and how she is, makes sort of throws a light on something that Fern feels like about herself. Mm, mm -hmm. Some sort of inadequacy that Mm -hmm. she's feeling about herself or Mm -hmm. rawness, Mm -hmm. vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Um, And she's taking everything to heart. I mean, she's gone into the diary room and she says, I'm being, you know, forgotten about. I'm doing things that don't matter and people aren't noticing. I was asked to do the washing. I'm basically the, you know, the, the laundry woman. It was all very negative from Fern last night. Yeah. And then to suddenly just get up in front of everyone and start belting out this really cringeworthy song, I I, I really struggled with that. Yeah. It felt from a very fake place. And um, yeah, could she be could she be someone who's potentially gonna quit? Could she walk? So I was gonna say this yesterday when we were talking about who we thought might be nominated, and it didn't feel like yesterday there was anyone who seemed like a walker but equally having watched last night's episode I think we could see Fern decide Mm -hmm. to leave I I see a couple of people worried that um when Sharon leaves that Lulu might also make an exit (gasps) um especially because he seemed to take the the nomination thing really quite quite hard um one that he'd been nominated by everyone else, which I thought was in stark contrast to how he was kind of saying to Lauren, he was like, it doesn't matter, like, it's relax, it's all fine. <laughs> yeah. It happened to him and he was just like, oh my God, I can't believe these people nominated me. Da, da, da. But the actual not being saved by his best friend, again, yeah. very bizarre. Yeah. What did you think of that? I can see Sharon her logic. choosing ZZ. Can you? I think that she's right. And I... I the British public are much more clued up now about reality TV voting than in yesteryear. Everybody knows that Louis is delivering in that house. Mm -hmm. I think that until he really starts to annoy people or upset people or, God forbid, says something terrible and gets himself (laughs) cancelled, I think he'll be fine. I think everyone knows he needs to stay. Mm -hmm. Um, Certainly, there's a more compelling argument to save him over Lauren and Fern, Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that Sharon just thought, of course, he'll be fine. Um, So he felt like an easy... And also, I think it made her look really good that she was prepared to not just stick with her pal. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think she was maybe thinking that it made her look good to save ZZ. Mm -hmm. Um, Clearly, what she said was, she reminds me of someone that I love, and that Mm -hmm. presumably is Kelly, Mm -hmm. Um, her daughter, you Mm -hmm. know, fiery yet vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, Everyone seemed surprised, but it was a lovely speech, wasn't it? And ZZ seemed really touched by it. It was really, and they seemed to have a lovely moment afterwards, and it actually, it made ZZ come across so much nicer yeah she's just not been very likable so far yeah um whereas actually their exchange you kind of saw how much it meant to her and I'm always conscious of that because that house for you know one space that you're in it's everyone wants to be in there you know there's this is the big famous celebrity brother yeah. house and to act like oh you're not bothered it was lovely to see her say actually I'm you know this is this means a lot to me yeah. and I'm really thankful to be saved yeah do you think there was anything in a couple of people um online were saying this that um obviously Sharon's been cancelled and she's opened up about that yeah over racism in America oh and there's a few people insinuating which I don't think there's any substance to at all but they're insinuating that you know she's she's done it for political reasons to choose 
Zizi, who's the young black female in the house. She wants to show positivity towards yeah, yeah, like rather than woman. saving an, an an old you know the male pale stale Louis yeah. Walsh, um, who we love and adore. Yeah, but yeah, it seemed to be maybe more of a political move in some people's minds. Which is interesting. I think you could definitely... There's definitely an argument for that. But the rest of Sharon's time in there has all felt very organic. Mm. Now, either she's just incredibly bloody good at playing the game. Yeah. And she's um, been around for decades. She knows yeah. how to play the game. Yeah. Interesting. But the... Um, the other point about Sharon that I'm obsessed with is how she basically thinks that she's Big Brother. So that's my theory. She thinks that she's the lodger, but actually in her real mind's eye, it's like, no, actually I'm running things here. Yeah. So when she, when this whole thing played out, she got to watch the nominations, which would have been, oh, that would have been my idea of heaven to be sitting listening on everyone's thoughts about everyone else. But she then didn't save Lulu, went for Zizi, and then while standing up and defending that decision um, to put Fern up instead, basically said, Lulu will be saved, Fern will be saved. Right, so she thinks that Lauren's going to go. Then in the guest bedroom, when she's chatting away with Lulu, she's like, it's Lauren's time. It's just Lauren's time. And I'm like, how have you made this decision? Like, she's made it happen. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm just going to completely if, if backtrack. Goes, if Lauren goes out, it's because of Sharon Lauren. Osborne. She's, yeah. she's masterminded this whole thing. I mean, Flick, two minutes ago, was sat here being like, you know, she's been very organic. But actually, no, she completely planned, she that, planned that around thing. the fact that... I mean, look, diplomatically, Lauren got the most nominations. Yeah. And was nominated before. So if she is thinking, I'll just do what the majority of the house are saying, then that's kind of what she's done. But if I was Lauren, I'd be like, okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> that she, I mean, her face did show that. Yeah. Um, and it really meant, it's, it's, it's really upsetting for Lauren, who just kept going on about how she was not bothered and she could, first of all, hilarious, save, she was like, I can't wait to see my dog and my children. Yes. Yeah, this is very Georgia Steele, Love Island esque of like being <laughs> grateful for her natural long hair, yeah, and then thinking, oh god, my you know my family, my friends, and yeah, stuff. that was so Lauren last I night, know. brilliant. Do you know who's very uh, not diplomatic god. as well? Who could actually um, shine a little bit more light on this and maybe the the reasons behind it and how much of it is a game? Go on. Legend, absolute legend. Go on. Kim Woodburn is on this podcast today, so let's hear from her about what she thinks about Sharon, the decision-making. We're going to talk to her all about like everything that's happened in the house so far and her predictions for the future. I love Kim. Can't wait. Kim. We've been talking on the podcast about the divide in the house between the youngsters and the older ones, but Fern, Britain, sort of really struggling to fit into either. What do you think about that? Well, uh, I've met Fern years ago. She is a lovely person. I mean, she's a gentle, soft person. You know, we know, we won't discuss it. She's had a lot of sadness in her private life and in her working life. She's been done the dirty. And she's a soft, gentle soul who's trying to fit in. But I think she's ideal when she's sitting at home, writing her books. Quite a quiet soul, but a very, very nice lady. Mm -hmm. I can't say her wrong. I, do you know what? I'd like her to win whether she will, who knows, because I'll tell you something, of all the people in there, I believe she would be absolutely over the moon and it would be something in her life that, that, that she, I've won, I've won, I've won, because I say in her working life and her personal life, she's lost and lost and she hasn't deserved it. For her to win, I'd be thrilled. Don't think she will, but I wish she would. I can't say a wrong word about her. Uh, just a sad, sad lady who's sweet as pie, and she's genuine. Mm -hmm. She's genuine. So, do you believe? Now do you sort of take on um, what what Fern was saying about uh, Ek and Sue? Do you agree with Fern then about how maybe she's a bit of a a game player? Well, Ek and Sue, you see, she never stops bringing up Love Island. You know, all the time, Love Island, Love Island. Okay, Love Island, she won, but we're never let to forget it, are we? Ekin Sue is a player. Ekin Sue wants to go as far as she can go. She must pay her publicist a fortune. She's ever had the paper. She's ever here. I don't dislike Ekin Sue. I've got no feelings for her at all. She's terribly ambitious. 
and she thinks, I don't know where she gets this hoity-toity from. Uh, she's been on Love Island, which I watch Love Island. Well, who would miss those young men's chests here at my age, let's be honest. But Love Island, I watch it. It's bare bums and breasts hanging out, out dear. And that's what she, you've got to do to go on there. And that's all right. But, you know, she's a bit hoity-toity. Not very, don't dislike her. But to me, she's got, not got a hope of winning. She's rather full of herself, you know. There's a, there's rather a large head in there. I don't know why. Uh, she does feel she's superior. Come on, calm down, Ekin, so you've got a long life. Just start behaving, dear. And stop mentioning Love Islands. <laughs> Do you think that she's uh, game-playing by hold, uh, by hanging out with all of the oldies? Because she's only 29, well, and she's spending well, the majority of her time with Sharon and Louis, who are in their 70s. I would have expected her to do that, really, you know, because um, Sharon has been wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad she's been in there. Mm -hmm. um, I know she's a hard bargain, bless her, but I tell you what, she's been a massive asset. I like Sharon. I like her. I think she can fire off when she doesn't like things, but she will give a person full credit as she's extremely kind. She combines this mixed personality, which go bones very well in that house. She's lovely, but she tells it like it is. I like her very much, and I'm so glad they got her in, because I think without her, it'd be rather a boring show. But I do take your point. I do notice uh, with Ek and Sue that she gravitates towards the older ones that have been very successful and very famous. But, of course, she, she wants to get on, dear, doesn't she? Mm. I mean, it's obvious Ek and Sue is extremely... Extremely, extremely. Oh, what can I say about her? She wants to go to the top. And if it means crawling around the very well-known people who may have some influence, Eck and Sue will do it. I mean, do we endeavour for it? In a way, yes. In a way, no. Most people couldn't do it. But if it means crawling to the top, top people, Eck and Sue will do it, dear. Um, I suppose it, it, ambitious. And I think... I, I, I think to the point of ruthless, I don't like that. Mm. She could be a danger. She's so ambitious. You know, good luck to her. She's not fooling anybody. Good luck to the girl. Good luck. And we've got uh, Sharon last night. She was controlling the house, really, the whole series, because she has uh, was able to, to save ZZ and she put Fern up instead. Um, what did you make of her not choosing to save Louis? Well, you know, Louis Walsh, you know, I mean, I know they've been friends for years, but I didn't expect what I got from Louis Walsh at all. He's a grumpy, grouchy, thoroughly nasty piece of work who tends to hate youngsters, who he's made his money from managing youngsters. I mean, he'll say of them, what has she done? What, she's only young. He's a nasty man. He's bone idle. He believes he's the best thing since sliced bread. He's privileged and he should be wasted on hand and foot. In a challenge, what does he do? He goes to bed and he gets away with it. I'm disappointed in Louis. He's a thoroughly grumpy, grouchy, bitter old man who is dying to get back on television, but he's a horror. I mean, when he went in there, he said, oh, Simon's great. I thought, you no more think that than fly. And then when Sharon got to him and she said, well, they were in her bedroom, she, she made it clear from what she was saying that Simon is uh, not in her good books, that she's not keen on him. And then, uh, you know, and then Louis said, oh, I quite agree. But he's saying originally, oh, Simon's lovely. He's a two-faced, silly old man. He's become a real old fool. And do you need a twisted, nasty piece of work that's got no time for youngsters who thinks he's a privileged few that should be wasted on hand and foot? And the darn fools in there are letting him do it. You see, if I was in there... I thought, Louis, get off your backside, wash a dish, dear. Or mm. get off your back, because I'm not wasting hand of you. But nobody nobody will say it. And I'm sure, I mean, I would, but nobody. But he's not a nice person. I'm disappointed because he seemed so lovely when he was on the Simon Cowell show. Oh, gosh, not at all. Nasty piece of work. Dying to be up there again with the biggies. Horrible old man. He's going nowhere. He needs to go out. He adds absolutely nothing, just a nasty piece of work. And very two-faced, very two-faced. 
And I think he slipped up last night because he mentioned about the public having awful taste. You know, remember, they've got really bad taste. And I thought, well, hang on, it's the public who are going to save you. So that could have been a moment that actually his downfall of that he gets kicked out tonight. No, Amanda, I don't think he thinks before he speaks. He comes up with these outrageous <laughs> things. He really t- no, I don't think, and to be honest with you, I'm an old broad. I mean, I'm 82, but I'm an old broad. But frankly, I think he's brave. No, I, honestly, there's something got gone wrong with Louis. I mean, he sits there in a day, and the way he spoke to that girl from a to the housewife show, no, 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 on the bed. Well, I wish it had been me, Amanda. <laughs> what? 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 So, no, he's a thoroughly nasty piece of work. He's bitter and twisted. Why, I do not know. He hates it. He thinks he's, he's, he's the best at sliced bread. The man is only young compared with me, and he's become a twisted, bitter old fool. Heaven knows why. He's had a jolly good life. A thoroughly two-faced old horror. Get him out. He's not going to win. Get him out. The one and only Kim Woodburn. Do you think Kim Woodburn's got a mug that says, you are my sunshine on it? I'm going to have to get in the post now because she'll want one. <laughs> I remember interviewing her a while ago and we were on the phone and um, I thought she was just hysterical. Mm. I mean, she is just very funny. Whether she means, whether it's an act or not, she's just so funny. And she had gone to hang up the phone, but it hadn't disconnected. And I heard her <laughs> talking about me. This is exceptional tea. <laughs> Go on. What did she say? So it was like, I don't know whether she'd put it down. Like, it was just a really, I don't know. I I don't know how it had had happened. And I thought, should I hang up? No. But you you don't, do you? Um, What did she say? She was just talking about, like, what we talked about. And then she, I didn't listen for too long, but she just said about, what a lovely girl that girl is. What a lovely girl. I was so happy because I think it's fair to say, and Kim would agree, that she doesn't like many people. No. And she's irritated by quite a lot of them. Um, so to get the sort of approval from Kim herself, is, I feel like that's kind of you've yeah. made it in life. Like, what more do you need? Do you know what? And I won't name names because <laughs> it's not my story to tell. But um, I have, uh, obviously, we speak to journalists and we uh, the conversations are recorded and everybody knows that because it's, um, you know, a video and all that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, and a journalist similarly had the same situation where they, they hadn't hung up and they were straight up slagging them off. <gasps> <laughs> But this journalist was like, just means I did, you know, I asked a hard question. And That's true. Our, our job is sometimes to ask a hard oh, question. Oh, totally, yeah, um, totally. You know, sometimes people need holding to account and that kind of thing. Um, so Sometimes I do know. think you can be, I mean, I think the press does get, a, you know, a really bad rap in certain situations. Mm-hmm. But I, I do think that like, being nice, being kind to someone who's actually being in a really vulnerable position. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, stands for a lot. The fact that you can you can ask the hard question, but maybe not in an aggressive way, and they end up you know really opening up. Yeah, um, being I in always... situations where they start crying and it really affects you. Like you come away. That's what my oh, favorite part yeah. of the job is not making people cry, but you know when you're in a really deep conversation with someone because yeah. you've really connected. It's yeah, lovely. yeah, definitely. Like when someone trusts you with their story, particularly, and trusts you to tell it properly and sort of mm. do it justice um yes yeah, a lot of responsibility in that way yeah. isn't it? but yeah. then i also think it's really important and and we particularly see this when we're reporting on these kind of shows um love island that kind of thing where viewers want someone holding to account on something mm-hmm. so an example that always sort of stuck with me was um do you remember in love island winter last year yeah um olivia got a really bad rap yes and um viewers really wanted her to be held account on the sort of hypocrisy of the way she treated kai in the recoupling after casa Mm -hmm. do you remember Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i remember that um the journalist here i think it was amy brookbanks um who did the chat with olivia when she came out um everyone was really happy that amy had said to her have you watched that back? How do you feel about it? Do you feel like you were being a hypocrite? And I think sometimes we are the sort of voice of the viewer. Sometimes, mm. like we're asking them, sort of, what did you think? Why did you do that? Um, uh, that's the the best part of the job is actually uh, being able to ask a question that, as a fan, I really want to know. Yeah, I mean, you sometimes have to if you're interviewing someone who, you know, maybe you're not really into what they 
they're about. Yeah. And it, you, you're listing all these questions out. You think, oh my God, what am I going to say? What if there's silence? And other times, if you're really a fan of something, you're basically having a conversation. You can say, right, hang on. Why did you, do, what was the meaning of this? Yeah. Did you mean it to come across like this? Da, 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 da. Yeah. It's so good. So like, honestly, if you, if you have something that you want to know or ask any of these people, you just tell us because mm. we will ask them for you. <laughs> we we will the happily mouthpiece. ask them for you. Even if it means not hanging up and then slagging us off. <laughs> <laughs> Can you be that one that you get slagged off? Oh, yeah. yeah it happens take it daily. I don't take care. It <laughs> <laughs> um, so the opposite of slagging off that made me laugh last night um, was on Late and Live. They played uh, some clips from Fern... Louis and Lauren's celebrity pals yes. supporting them. Yeah. And it made me laugh so much. So basically, first of all, Lauren had Nick and Royston of Housewives uh, supporting her, just basically saying she was amazing. And they were like, all you gays have got to vote for her. She's a gay icon and all of this <laughs> stuff. And then she's in there slagging off David constantly for being too loud and proud and all of that sort of thing. Oh my so I was like, that's God, awkward. That's really awkward. Then you've got Sunita, the legend, uh, backing Louis, um, which just made me laugh because I was just like, wow, like mm. that's Louis's backer, like what an icon. And then um, Fern had Greg Wallace who was like, go on, Fern, you're doing great. How close are they? And it was, the other messages were sort of, you know, a good minute, minute and a half, and it was literally Greg Wallace going, you can do it, Fern. Like, completely hadn't got the brief of, like, this is compelling people to vote for her. And I was just like, oh, God, like, does Fern not have, I mean, she must have, I, I don't think, know. I think she's... Is it an age? I mean... Oh, all right, Sharon. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hello, this is Greg Wallace with a message for Fern. Fern, yeah, you on. are doing amazingly well and I really hope you win. Go on! <laughs> no, I, I think with Fern, she's, she's moved to the seaside. She writes her books. She lives quite an isolated life by, by the sounds yeah. of it. And, and like she pointed out, she's been out of that media bubble for about 15 years well that's what i meant by is it age is it more that <laughs> she doesn't have people that can just jump on their video zoom mm. that has a ring light at home ready to go for totally, these situations yeah. Yeah. Pro- probably you know mm. um so but what i thought also was interesting is that um you guys brilliantly do all these polls on Twitter and it's actually looking really equal ahead of the eviction. Way more so than I was thinking. Yeah, so the one that I quickly looked up before we came on, Lauren, 29% wanted to save her, Louis, 35% and Fern, 36%. Mm. And that's close. I saw a lot of the fans arguing between themselves actually today. I love it when they argue. Because you know how sometimes they post a, a snapshot of like they've, use all their five votes because they can do it for free on the app and so they've they've posted it to say look I've backed Fern and then there's been like actual arguments breaking out underneath in the comments they're saying why would you say Fern what has she done like we need the drama and it's true Fern's not going to be in there and make any drama you know as far as Ekin's concerned they're friends like there's nothing yeah. you know there's been no actual tiff between them yeah whereas lauren at every opportunity is slagging someone off <laughs> and louis is slagging them off like but literally to their face like yeah. he's just gold yeah i think out of the three of them fern doesn't bring us enough drama but i do think she's going to get this um maybe this is too mean to say but maybe more of a pity vote because mm. we do feel sorry for her you know she's obviously quite vulnerable she's obviously struggling in there mm. and I think as a nation we do like to sort of protect them yeah and we say like you're okay like give her that boost of give being saved boost. so my prediction is that Lauren will go yeah. but I do think it probably should be firm I completely agree our vote's not split no we are five and five um right other funny things I've got to talk to yeah. you about Louis, I don't know whether you saw this on Late and Live, they showed an extra clip of his nomination where he was like, I'm nominating Fern Cotton. (laughs) The person that I decided to nominate for eviction is Fern Cotton. (laughs) Wrong Fern. Even like completely different spelling. Oh, Everything's different about brilliant. that. Brilliant. Just 
brilliant. Um, awesome. And um, <clears throat> again, sorry to keep banging on about the traitors. Wow, um, it's the <laughs> it's the just nobody can get anyone's name right these days, can they? I know. <laughs> It's like the, sorry, I'm referencing the chalkboards with the spelling, the incorrect spellings all the time on the traitors. Um, But that just made me laugh. The other thing from Louis last night, um, this is Louis's greatest hits right now. Um, They were talking to Ekin about like what she hoped to achieve and she was saying that she'd really like to try and have a baby. And he was like, no, you're not having a baby get involved in the acting and she was like well you know my relationship I'm not thinking about babies because my relationship you know break up and he was like stop talking about that relationship it's over <laughs> and I was like it's yes. brutal but do you know what you kind of you need that in that moment he turned into Ekin's agent yeah <clears throat> do you know what I mean like yeah. stop talking about that relationship we're yeah. done with that now Ekin is very much in the heartbreak stage she really is. And I think if there was a really good looking single guy in there, she would be, that would be having her rebound from live TV. Thank God there's not. Oh, really? But also, I kind of wish there was. To that, yeah. I know. Um, but also, excitingly, or not excitingly, it will be great when it happens, but equally sad that we lose her. No, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Sharon is definitely leaving tonight so i think during everyone... live eviction yeah so, oh yeah so i think that everybody's suspected that was the case we'd, mm. we'd already sort of discussed five days so sharon is definitely leaving tonight um which i just think is such a loss for the series mm. but um i can't wait for her exit interview i know that's gonna be iconic i think so but the but the actual uh, the person who the other evictee who goes out i I imagine they'll be a bit annoyed at having to share the limelight with Sharon because yeah. you know what it's like, especially for us journalists, media rounds and things. You then get both of them because there's only a, there's a quick turnaround. We've yeah. got another eviction coming up on Friday. Yeah. So really, you're kind of missing out on quite a lot of airtime. Yeah. Or press opportunities, and whoever is up, whoever goes out, the three of them, Sharon's going to be the most popular one. And oh yeah, everyone the Sharon wants to show. Talk about yeah. 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 So unless it's Sharon and Louis together. Oh, that would be great. And yeah. in my eyes, they could just do it together. Oh, and they would love that. As and well. I think that would, that's a situation where they are greater than the sum of their parts, I yeah. think. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. I loved when Sharon was watching Lulu. Um, he's just Lulu now because I just love that. Yeah. She in that. And, and she was, she was <laughs> you know, annoyed at him for nominating Zizi in the way that he said it. And Lulu. Oh, it's Lulu. Just Lulu. <laughs> I wonder how many times she said that in the house. Oh, yeah. She's Another great. one with the drinking game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, got too many. Um, Bradley last night, speaking of drinking games, on the live feed, um, and I loved this, because I can just imagine him saying this in real life. You know how we've said before, some, some of Ekin's talking points feel a bit like she'd thought of things to spark <laughs> conversations much, yeah. before. Like, what do you think happens after death, et cetera, et cetera. What's mm-hmm. the meaning of your life? Bradley said, um, if you had to replace all your fingers... <laughs> With five different liquids. Oh. What liquids would you choose? That is so <laughs> odd. And I thought, that boy's brain is brilliant. Yeah. Like, fascinating. Not yeah. the old classic arms this is for bit, legs, legs for arms. This is a bit Chris Taylor-esque, isn't it? Love Island's very own Chris Taylor and kind of having that chat yeah. where you're on a date and you're like... Um, yeah, but what liquids would you choose? Champagne. But on what use is champagne? <laughs> None that part to drink. <laughs> You'd want at least one finger that was like fairly viscous. Mm. No. I mean, if that's your life, is just like having these liquid fingers. I don't know. What, like <laughs> that's just. I'd rather just be drinking and just having a nice time <laughs> on tap. <laughs> well, the one thing that I'm not going to be having a nice time at is on the other action on tonight show. Mm. You know how my ick is um, when they do a performance. You've got so many icks, though. I was a bit unsure as to what you were going to say there. We'll update the update the, the encyclopedia. <laughs> oh, oh no! I, I I actually did like the other one that we rowed about. I loved that one on like day two. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know the really intense one. Oh, so it's a talent show tonight. And oh, okay. They basically it's kind of almost like a boy band girl band situation. Oh. Mm. and Marisha's in charge of the girl band and Nikita's in charge of the boy band 
and then Louis and Sharon are the judges. Oh, Marie, um, she's going to be smashing it. Yeah. Love her. Yeah. So I think we saw a little bit on Late and Live last night where Lauren was trying to do the splits and that's funny. <laughs> like the kind of... Not taking themselves seriously. The logistics behind it is funny, um, but the the actual performance, I think I'll have to leave the room. I'm getting weird flashbacks to Ekin Sue when she was in Love Island. Did she do some sort of roast? Yes, she did. But it went down really badly. It was just kind of... Ugh. Yeah. You know, she went in on people, but it wasn't... Yeah. It was quite a dramatic performance, wasn't it? The yeah, way that it was. She, yeah. yeah. Oh God, but you know that she thinks that. she's a bit of a singer. Yeah, I imagine she thinks that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she's just got that, the triple threat of like, they've dancing, acting, singing. Yeah, oh God, the whole thing brings me out in hives. I'm going to have to leave the room. Do you think she, did she say last night how pretty she is? She's not just a pretty face. I don't think she said it last no, night. No, she didn't. She tuned into the podcast. <laughs> she tuned in and she thought, I've been rumbled. <laughs> Mandy D has spotted me. I should be humble. Mandy D says I need to be more humble. Oh, I just, she's just so entertaining for me to watch. I just, I really, really love her. No, I know. Oh, well, that was fun. Yeah. I mean, obviously it would have been better if my fingers were made of champagne. But... <laughs> Well, um, happy birthday for tomorrow. Oh, well, that is one day when one needs champagne fingers, isn't it? Yeah, and you've got um, some special guests to fill my place. Yeah, we've got a bit of a who's who of the sun coming up. Excellent so staff, looking should... forward to listening and watching. You sounded bitter when you said that. Well, yeah, I don't, I'll get jealous. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm off to make myself some real tea <laughs> in my mug. So, see you tomorrow. Bye. The person that I decided to nominate for eviction is Fern Cotton.